I'm going to comment over this. I don't have to be talking the whole time, and I'm going to try not to pause the, the video. So I'll talk real quick, and I'll, I've got my yellow marker here. I'll draw on the screen. This is equal offense, which is a form of straight pool. Okay, so the goal with equal offense is you get a wide open break, as you just saw. Uh, all 15 balls racked in the triangle and just wide open break. And then you want to clear the table, but play position for a break ball, like a straight pool break ball. Then you need to pocket the break ball, open the rack, and run five more. So a perfect score is 20 points. That's clearing the table is 14. The break ball is the 15th point. And then um, five more points after the break shot is 20 points. So it's an easier version of straight pool. Typically what you'll do is you'll play against one opponent and each of you gets either five or ten innings. So if you get five innings, a perfect game is 100 points, 20 points each inning. And you just alternate uh, breaking the rack wide open and then seeing if you can run all the way to 20 points. Score however many points you get and see who gets the most after, the, after you each have shot for the same number of innings. I'm doing it as a solo challenge. I simply want to see... If I can run five racks in a row, that's 100 points. So five perfect racks. So I'm upset with myself here. I just failed. I'm trying to bring the cue ball right in between here. So I can just do stop shot on a 12 and then on the 14 back this way. Then you can shoot the 15, clear that. And then the three ball becomes your key ball for the 10 ball break shot. That's what I was hoping for. I didn't get it, and I don't have another good shot, so I've got to shoot the 12 and go back and forth, which is a lot more difficult than what I was hoping on shooting. Um, luckily, it doesn't have a lot of speed, you know, so it hit the rail like here and still went in. Um, now, I, I, can't, I don't have a shot on the 14, but I, now I can shoot the 15, then shoot the 14 and play position on something else, like the 11 or the 13, and then I still have the 3, 10, and the rack, so that's, that's equal offense. I wanted to mention that uh, I've been at this for a week. <laughs> I played equal offense on a live stream. I think it was about a week ago. And I played 10 innings. And I, I, I only got, I don't remember how many points I got. But it, I got a little over half of the possible points, like 130, 140 points out of 200. So right there was a little nip draw. I call it a nip draw because I definitely want to shoot the 13 next. Um, I think I want to roll forward here. Then you shoot, yeah, then you shoot the nine, and you get straight in on the six in the side, and then it's a stop shot, stop shot, and then stop shot, or just draw back a little bit from the three, and you're on your break shot. So that's a classic end pattern, and I mess it up, I don't come far enough. Now I can pinch draw this, and that's, I kind of pull my cue ball, but I have a lot of angle, and it's going to pull it like way over yeah, here. That was terrible. And I decide, rather than doing that, I'm going to let the cue ball go. I'm going to let it go, try and go straight up and straight back down. Either angle on the four, four ball, any angle in here less than 30 degrees is going to work, and I'm going to be able to get on this three ball. But how much better would it be if I just got straight in on that six instead? <laughs> anyway, so this is equal offense. And so what did I just talk about? I just talked about straight pool. This is a training game for straight pool. If you want to run 100 balls in straight pool, let's say you want to run 25 balls. You've never run over 20. Let's say you want to run 50 balls. It doesn't matter what your goal is. Play equal offense. It's an easier version of straight pool to get you going and to learn stuff, stuff so you don't struggle so much with the full-fledged game. Why is it easier? Number one reason it's easier is you're starting with an open break. You just pop the whole, you know, whole rack of 15 and open them wide, and then you start to shoot from wherever the cue ball stops. So you're always starting from an open rack. So it's great. It's fantastic for learning how to play straight pool. And it's, it's not super easy because, as you saw me just shoot here, you have to clear the rack and play oh, position yeah, for a break ball. shot. So it's still straight pool. Yeah, I mean, you're just starting out easier okay, with already. an easier... You're starting out with an open rack. So that's what, and then the second way that it's easier is after the, you've successfully pocketed the break shot, like me right now, I only have to pocket five more balls for a perfect game. I, 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 I shot 14 in the break ball. That's 15 balls. Five more gives me 20. 20 is a perfect rack in equal offense.
So it changes your strategy here because now I'm not trying to open these balls up. I am not playing position for a break shot to open these up. I'm trying to just get my five more points with the least amount of risk, trying to get this natural position. One shot flows to the next, to the next. As you can see, I, I shot uh, one. I shot this ball one, two, three, four, and then five or six. Or maybe I got an extra ball because there should be nine left. So after I shoot this one, there's three, six. Yeah, I don't need the one. I already got my five extra with this ball over here. So anyway, that's that's rack number one. Let's put it over here in this window shade. That's oh, you can't see that window shade. Let's put it on this window shade. That's rack number one. So that's 20 points. When you break the balls, you're trying to shoot a stop shot with the cue ball. Sometimes it'll pop back, but you want to just stop it right there. You want the balls to spread. See how they spread? They went to the side rails and the bottom rails. You want to hit them hard enough that the balls go to those rails. You don't want to hit it so hard that they hit the rails and come back and tie up in the center of the table. And you don't want to hit it so soft that they just barely move out a little bit and, and you have a huge cluster in the center. So you have to experiment with the break shot to find out what that speed is. Now, I didn't control my cue ball well. Look at it way over here. But so it's identical to straight pool. You're just starting with an open rack. So I'm trying to get an angle on the eight because this is the problem. These two balls over on the side rail. So with this angle on the eight, it's natural. I just go to the rail and hit this ball out, and I'm going to have a shot on the two next, or if I split these balls, I'll have a shot on the five next. But the important thing is that once that, that stripe ball is out of there, every ball's wide open. Now I only have this issue. How am I, I'm looking at them right now. How am I going to deal with those? So the 14 balls of break ball, right? The six ball, if I get a straight inch stop shot on the six, that sets me up for these balls in this pocket. But I got to clear both of these balls first. So there's work to do. Now, that's not the only way to deal with these two balls. There's other ways. But because the balls are largely wide open, this is easier than straight pool because you don't have to deal with as many issues. But as you can see, you're still playing exactly by the rules of straight pool. This ain't easy, folks. I've been trying to run five racks in a row for a week, and I finally did it tonight. So right now, I'm just trying to bring the cue ball down here, so I have a shot on this ball on the side. And I think I hit it too hard. Yeah. But I realize I have a perfect angle on the six, right? Because now I don't want to bump both of these balls. I want to knock the four ball this way, and I want the cue ball to come off of that. Because then I've got shots in every direction. The 5, the 9, the 12, the 10. See that? Shots in every direction if you do it that way. If you bring the cue ball off that cluster. So that's a good straight pool lesson. Now I have two break balls. So you got to think about it. I can use this ball as the key ball for the 14 break shot. Um, I don't know what key ball I would use for this four balls of break shot. But I love this decision. I'm shooting the 9. Just bring the cue ball back out center table. Um, the 9 is blocking the pocket for this 13, which I think I'm going to shoot the 13 right now. Both of these stripes go in the upper right. So if I just shoot the 13 and come back up to center table, I've got maximum shots. I've got this ball, both of those in the corner, this ball. But I am thinking about an end pattern now. I think I want to shoot the one ball. Is a key ball. I'm not sure. Ooh, I barely... Well, that wouldn't have been the end of the world if I hit that ball full, but I think I'm trying to come out here to center table. Anyway, um, I've got to get rid of this five because I want to shoot the one ball down here. Use one of these balls as a K2 to set up for the one and bounce out for the, this ball as the break shot. See that? So, possibly out do that now i'm not sure looks like i've got too much angle so this isn't ideal this 14 is blocking the pocket here this five is blocking this pocket so this isn't a great situation okay so i'm going to take care of one blocker ball come over to the 14 now i think i can go like this two rails back out center table i think i want to play position for the 10 and get kind of close because if i i might end up with good position in the five but if i don't i can shoot the 10 
and then use the 10 to get on the 5, 5 to get on the 11, and then you come back across for the 1. That's a lot of travel, isn't it? Maybe I'll come up with something better. Oh, I do come up with something better. See, the, the 10 is a, bet, is a good K3 ball, a K2 ball, rather, for the 1. So now I'm playing straight across here because then I can shoot the 11 in this corner. Now, I end up dead straight on this 11, which I hate. I, I wanted to stay under the shot line like this so that I can just kind of send my cue ball straight at the 10 like that. But I didn't get it. And I'm, 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 I don't, I'm not happy about it. I'm like, okay, I got to draw the cue ball back here. But then you end up bringing the cue ball all the way up here and you don't have a good shot shot on either ball. I'm like, okay, you need to suck it up and just shoot a long 10 ball. That's what you got to do. If I went and looked at it and if I can shoot, a stop shot or just kind of stun this way a little bit is all I can Oh, roll forward a little bit. What I wanted to do is get dead straight because if I have a dead straight stop shot, then I have a perfect angle to shoot the one and bounce off like this and be on my break shot. That's what I want to do. And I didn't get straight. So this is what you're supposed to do. You do not bend down and shoot this ball. You walk around and look. I can't tell you how many times I've told myself would you stop being a statue and walk around and look? And I'm finally starting to listen. Because I'm, what I'm trying to do is stun the cue ball over. Because even with an inside angle, I can draw the cue ball like this on that one. Okay, so I decided since I had that angle, don't fool around with it. Just go ahead and hit it. That's your best chance of pocketing that ball cleanly is give it a nice, good, not, you know, not blasting it, a nice firm stroke where I can bounce off the rail and get this little angle little pinch draw, and I've got a perfect shot on my break ball. There we go. That's ideal. Ideal angle. Should I go ahead? Yeah, let me try and scoot your head. Oop, went a little bit too far. Okay, here's the break shot. This is center ball. Hard. Hard. Well, that wasn't draw. That was center ball, and you can see it's got outside English no matter what. Now, here's the easy part. That was the break shot, right? And I made a bonus ball in the side pocket. So now I only need four Seven. more balls. So I decide this is too finicky to try and shoot this stripe in, in this side pocket and get on this 13. There's no need to do that. I just want to run into these balls because I'm going to have a shot in either direction, which I do. So now I only need three balls. One, two, three. Done. So... This is what makes equal offense a great straight pool training game. Is that after I shoot a break shot, I'm not trying to run the rack and shoot another break shot and another and another. No. You only need to open the rack and get five more points. Perfect perfect inning is 20 points. So it's easier from, than straight pool for that reason, but it's still as challenging as the game of straight pool uh, as far as strategy. So now I'm, I'm just checking. I'm making sure. Yeah. There's four left. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine balls left. So just roll this forward, shoot the 11 back here, and I've got my, my six balls total. And my second perfect score of 20. Pocket this 11, and that is rack two. And I'm feeling good. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times over the last week I've run two, two in a row. And then something happens on the third rack or the fourth rack, and I never made it to five. Tonight, I, I have really was beating myself up to stay down on the shot. All, all the shot routine things that you're supposed to be doing, slow backstroke, all the things, all the things. And it's and walk around, don't be a statue. And it's starting, it's starting to sink in because I'm really playing a lot of pool nowadays. Let's try to stop the cue ball. Yeah, I kind of stopped it. It's going to bounce on you because you're, you're shooting straight at 15 racks. So it's going to bounce straight back even if you try and shoot a stop shot. But that's what you want. You want to keep your cue ball here in the center of the table. And then inside. notice there was a little – the speed is perfect, a little pop. And that sends balls to all three rails. Actually, it sent it to all four rails. No balls in the rack area, but if you do it right, look. Potential break ball, potential break ball. When you look at a rack like this, this is what equal offense does for you. No two balls are touching. They're wide open. You can run this rack, even if you're not a pro straight pool player. Just take your time, make good decisions, and make the ball and keep the cue ball in the open and try and play real good position. Now, all three of these balls go in this pocket. So I'm just coming out here and see what develops. 
but probably <laughs> one of these balls I want to preserve as a key ball for the one ball as a break shot because I'm a right-hander. Okay, so rolling that in softly, so I have the 6. Um, I can probably draw back and shoot the 12, or I could shoot the 6. Oh, I remember what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, perfect. I'm citing right now the 10 in the side because the 10 does not go past the 1. So I'm perfect on the 6 to roll forward and get here for the 10 in the side. This is what equal offense does for you. This is an easier version of straight pool, but you have, you have to recognize that the 10 ball is a trouble ball. You need to get rid of it because it doesn't go anywhere else. So you do that early in the rack when you have lots of options for playing position before and after the trouble ball. Now I'm deciding, it looks like I've decided that this is my key, key ball for the one ball break shot, probably. I might break with the 11. But because of that, I want to get rid of the low balls. So that's why I played position here to get the five, come out for the eight, and then the seven. Get rid of these low balls, and then these upper balls are the only ones that are left. Now, I think I go look at this. This is a li little bit tricky. Yeah. So in that earlier rack, I got, I got this angle on this ball to go to the side rail and out. But that doesn't do anything here because the 11 is blocking the 3. So I want to get on the 3 ball in the side after, on this 7. So this time I didn't go forward. I, I just stopped it. And I should have drawn it back a little because I have too much angle. And I have to think about this a little bit. Because it's kind of hard to, I have to cut this ball, and it's kind of hard to hold the cue ball here. But I finally decide that I can do it. Um, I'm going to throw the ball in, lots of left English, and then just a short punch draw. And touching that ball is fine. That, that didn't hurt my break ball at all. But now I can shoot the 11, go to the rail, come out, get on, uh, shoot whichever ball this is, and get on the 11, and then use this ball to get over here on the 10. Not ideal because it's not a stop shot pattern. And I didn't get good here. What I wanted was this angle because then you can go to the rail and just come all the way over here and then you're on this stripe in the side and you draw back to get on your key ball. So I didn't get that. And so what I decide is I want this. There's the shot line, so I want my cue ball over here. I'd rather hit below that point and then bounce up to here. But I didn't. I, I hit, I'm pretty much on the shot line. And I'm actually on the wrong side of the shot line. Um, uh, I've got a, I, the cue ball is going to hit the rail here. So all I want to do is go to the rail here, right next to the pocket, and then come out and try and get straight in on this ball. But I definitely don't want to be inside this ball. And as you can see, I, 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 I cut the ball on the side too much. So I'm not happy with myself. I have too much angle and I can't hold this. But this is going to happen, and this is a key ball shot you need to practice because it's twice across. You need to learn how to get the cue ball to go straight across, not up or down, and then hit three rails. One, oh, I'm not going to hit my third rail. I bet I was trying to hit three rails because if you hit three, if you hit the third rail, okay, then it's bouncing off the third rail. Boom, you're on a break shot. Got a perfect angle. So I got a little fortunate. I didn't quite hit it straight across. I think if I hit it harder, I might have scratched it in the side. So, But I do have a break shot. This is a pretty far and outside and a shallowish angle, and the cue ball is going to go into here. You want to use a high ball above center. Ooh, I might be shooting below center. But the key to this one is you need to hammer. It is hammer time. You notice that really uh, long, slow backstroke? Give yourself a good long backstroke so you can come through and get lots of acceleration. Now, I only need five more points, right? Here's one, here's two, here's an easy one, three, and then I've got a bunch of open balls for the other two. So don't do anything fancy, right? I'm checking my count. I need four more balls. So I think what I want to do now is tap this to the rail and just do this. So I can shoot the 8 in the side, because then stop shot on the 8, stop shot on the 3, stop shot on the 7. And there's my four balls with zero risk. Uh, hit that a little hard. I think I got a little lucky, but I, I've got an easy shot, and it's what I said, 8, 3, 7. So you're learning about patterns. And this is, uh, even though it's a, you don't have to clear the whole table here, you still got to play the balls right, so you get your five bonus points 
for a perfect record 20. And I'm counting them to make sure, yeah, there's going to be nine after I make the three in the center. So, rack number three. And I've only done that a handful of times over the last week, three in a row. So I'm feeling really good now and just a little bit nervous. But all the attention I've been putting, well, I've been trying to do this over the last week, all the attention, attention I've been putting on my fundamentals, the stuff that I personally need to work on, which is walking around, checking my angles, addressing the cue ball uh, upright before I get down on the shot, making sure my alignment is good, um, no warm-ups before, uh, I know that I'm, I'm aimed properly and the ball's in the pocket. Smooth and slow warm-ups. Full pause at the cue ball. Slow backstroke. Smooth follow-through and stay down, stay down, stay down. Those are the things I need to work on. <laughs> Those are the things everyone needs to work on. You can't stop. You can't. Uh, you, it's impossible to work on those things too much. Okay. Again. The balls went in all, all four directions from the rack. There's nothing in the rack area, okay? But I didn't hit it too I didn't hit it too soft or too hard. What I've noticed already is that I've got a break ball here and a break ball with a one. I have an easy combination, 14 to this ball in the corner. So I'm using this ball on the side to clear these balls. Now I would have liked to shoot the nine and bounce up, but I got a little bit too much angle, so I can shoot the 12. Now I have a little bit shallower angle. I can shoot the nine, bounce out. And then I shoot this ball to play position for the seven. So that's all cleared, right? Now, and once when I shoot the seven, I want to get a shot on this 14. Pretty good. I can just draw straight back. I probably don't even have to go to the rail. Just come like this, I think. Or I might go to the rail. I'm not sure. Okay, went to the rail. That's fine. You want to get an angle, though, because I need to get the cue ball off this rail. I want to get... Well, actually, I could shoot the three-ball co combination as well. I like coming up higher and shooting the 14-ball combination, but no, I played position for the three. Okay, so now the combination and the cue ball is going to go to the bottom rail and up. So I'll have a shot on this ball this way or this one this way next. But the key to this rack is I need to get this 14 out of there. Obviously, now that I've shot, ooh, ooh, a little risky there. I was, well, I would have the 13 no matter what. But i got to get on this 14, and I have to, and I can't be over here to shoot the 14. i got to be up here so I can shoot the 14 without hitting the 1. And that's why I played position here. So I'm going to tap this 13 in, but I'm going to make sure I come all the way up here so that I can shoot the 14 and then have the 11 next. Get all the way up there. And actually, I, I've got an angle to cut the 14 to my left, but I don't mind it because if I can tap the one ball over here just an inch or two, that's fine. That that actually improves that as a brick ball. Well, I didn't tap it an inch, but yeah. So this isn't great because these two balls, you either go here or here, in either case, you're playing short side position over here. So this is this is not great. I decide that I've got to get, get the cue ball up here. And if I come short of it, I'll have the 10 in the side. And I did come short. So there's two options here. You can shoot the 10 in, uh, well, there's three options. You can shoot the 10 in, 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 in the side and come up here for this ball, which then sets you up for the these two in this pocket. You can shoot the eight in the corner and bring the cue ball over here, and then you're on position for all three balls. I decide to run into that ball. I don't know if that's the best choice, but I just didn't want to fool with it. And I thought if I split those balls or hit the six full ball full, either way, I'm getting a ball cleared, and that opens up the remaining ball to more pockets. And now I, I debate this a while. I can shoot the six up here and just kind of pinch hold the cue ball here. But then I'm playing position from the four or from the one up to the eight. And you got you to gotta land just right. I decide, what I finally decide is, is that over here I have position for both balls, for the eight ball here and for the six ball here. So it's natural. You just pocket the four, go to the rail, and come between these balls over here. I think that's my highest percentage route. Um, and then if I come far enough on the 8, I can shoot the 8 in the slide and slide down here for the 6 in the side. 
Or if I don't come far enough, I can shoot the six in the corner. Boy, I just barely got there, didn't I? And now I've got an angle to cut the six to my right. And I and I got an angle to cut the eight to the right, so I don't want to try and pull the cue ball over here. Then I gotta draw the cue ball to the rail to come out for the one ball break shot. So again, I look at the shot line for the eight. Right there. Oh, that's right here. So I've got an angle to cut the six to the right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm trying real hard to get the cue ball right on that line. Because then I can follow the eight straight in. And I do get it there. But that that's not the best end pattern. I didn't quite get the cue ball where I needed it on those shots. But I like the way I don't notice the L end pattern was completely determined. By all the work that I did to clear these balls and then get on that 14. That was the key to that rack. Once that's done, then you have an impact. So as you see, the lessons about how to play straight pool are identical to the, to the actual game of straight pool. But we're playing equal offense. You're just starting with an open line. So you want to learn, learn to play straight pool? This is the game you want to play. You can play it with friends, or you can challenge yourself, just like I'm doing here. It's, it's an awesome game. Um, I think here I decided I didn't want to use slow. I'm not sure. Let's see where I'm aiming. Yeah, I'm aiming above center. I want to hit this hard, and I know the cue ball is going to hit the four full. Either bounce back and go forward or go to the rail. So one of those two, and it went to the rail. But I want to hit it hard, hard, hard. I want to get those balls open. Now, this one didn't open as well. Uh, this is, but that was a straight pool break shot. Yeah, so I've got a shot on the eight, but I'm a little bit thin. I can shoot the eight there. and just center table, right? Just go to the rail, come back down center table, and then I have shots in in lots of direct, you know, like this or this, lots of directions. But I decide I don't want to do that. I like the four ball better. I think it's an easier shot. Pocket's bigger. The cue ball is going to go here here and i want to come out center table i'm hoping i don't hit the 15 but if i do it's not the end of the world but i like this shot because you let the cue ball go if you shot the 14 the eight ball you gotta you're kind of wanting to hit it a little timid and hard. then it can it can uh, drag on you and, and hit the rail and not go in uh, i like shooting this one because you can give just put a nice positive stroke on it now the drawback to that is I put the cue ball right back where it was. So I don't have a, I, I have the same decision, but I don't have that ball to bail me out. <laughs> so I can shoot the eight again, but same thing. It's a thin shot and it can skid on me. I'm going to shoot the 13 because once again, I don't have to do anything with the cue ball. The cue ball is going to do this and this, 13. and then I'm either going to have the 10 or one of these two balls in this corner or the three. But I'm shooting this because I don't have to do anything but pocket the ball. And I just give it a nice, smooth, and positive stroke. Actually, I gave it a very short backstroke because I didn't want the cue ball to travel a long way. Now I'm okay, and I, I think I only need two more balls. Let's see. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I need one more ball. So that's an idea, you know. You think, oh, you shoot your break shot and only need to make five more balls? Hey, it's not necessarily that easy. You have better play them right to get your five bonus balls for perfect score 20. So I am now over the moon because I've got four. One other time during this week have I gotten four in a row, and I don't remember what happened on the fifth rack. I, I, I hit the break shot bad or something. But I'm feeling good tonight, and I actually I'm feeling super positive. I like I'm like I know that if I pop this ball, hit this head ball square, and the cue ball pops back here, and I get the speed right, I'm going to have no two balls touching, and I'm going to clear it and get get my fifth rack of twenty points. Okay, the cue ball did. I didn't quite hold it, but look, no two balls touching. Break ball, break ball, break ball. I'm loving it. The only issue here is these two balls because that, the four, 14 is blocking the eight. So how am I going to deal with those? Oh, I'm going to deal with them now. I remember what happens here. I, I'm shooting the four because now I've got two key balls to set up for this ball as a brick shot. And I, I shot the four to give myself this angle to bump the eight out of there. Because once the eight's gone, 
Oh, this ball or these balls or these balls back there. I got balls everywhere to shoot. And I just wanted to get the eight ball clear. No, 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 hit it hard. And I almost ruined the run for myself. I almost tucked the cue ball up in here with no shot. As it is, I'm elevated over this ball to shoot the 14. I'm eight shooting that. I'm super close to this stripe. I could probably cut this stripe in this corner, but I'm so close to it. It's so easy to misjudge it, and, you, and you've got to do one of those little poke strokes where you can only follow through like a half an inch at most. So I debate this. The other shot is the 11. Now I'm, I'm, I'm bridged over. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm just looking at it. I'm like, okay, I can kind of do that. It's a little uncomfortable because I'm next to this stripe, but I Whoa. do have clear bridging to shoot the 11, and I'm like, that's the correct shot. Once again, I don't need to do anything but make the ball because the cue ball is going to go to the bottom rail and up, and I got shots in every direction. So this is stay still. Slow. You see how short my backstroke? Slow and short pitch backstroke. Just make the ball. Don't try to play position. <laughs> now I'm in under control. And now I look at it and I say, okay, I do not need two key balls, but I am not going to shoot the 14 because the 14 is going to be a key ball for, for this. At least that's what I thought at first. I have two key balls, which is not good. I need to get rid of one of them. Either one can work as a, as a, as a key ball for the 12 ball break shot. I, I could break with the 14, but the 12 is better. Okay. So what I'm deciding now is I want an angle on the six in the side. I want the cue ball to be back here. So I'm going to draw back to here because then I just tap it in six in the side and the cue ball goes here and I get that 15. Okay? And I want to, and I want an angle because then it's easy to just roll it in and the cue ball is going to come right over here under the right under the headrail and then I can move the cue ball down table somehow. <clears throat> After shooting the six, I've got to look at this because Either of these balls can be a key ball, and any of these three can be the K2. You can shoot any of those three and get on this on one of these in the side. But I need to choose which one. So what I'm deciding is get the cue ball way down here. See? Don't fool around with it and just play position for one ball. Get it down there. Okay. So now I look at it. And initially, I wanted to shoot the five, shoot the one, then come over here and shoot this and shoot this and this, and then get on the 13. And I realized I have a much better end pattern, which is I can use, shoot these three, and I can get a stop shot here. Then I'll have the angle on this ball to just slide down here, and that's my key ball. And that's... I talked about walking around and looking, and that's what I did, and I saw a better pattern than what I initially saw. Look at this now. Stop shot. Well, I moved up, but almost a stop shot, stop shot, stop shot, stop shot, slide down, bing. That's a good end pattern. Hard to mess that one up. And right now I'm trying to contain my excitement because I know I'm going to get a good angle on this, this 12 ball real good chance of getting my five bonus points and finally running five in a row for 100 points. And by the way, my next goal is 10 in a row for 200. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to go for it. You got to play good straight pool to get 10 racks in a row. Let me tell you folks. This is not easy. Now, try and get straight in on this. And, and you don't want to come past straight in. I got straight in. Actually, uh, 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 an angle up here would have been fine because then you can go to the rail and bounce out, and then you sure got this ideal angle. I didn't get that. I'm straight, so I want to roll forward half the distance from the uh, where the ball was to the pocket. So this is still uh, not quite as good as this angle, but it's pretty good. <clears throat> Once again, I don't want to fool with this rack. I want to, I want, I'm not going to try and just knock a couple loose. I want to get this open. This is almost the same as the break shot before on, that I shot, I think, one or two racks ago on this side. Just a little bit above center and 
It is hammer time, folks. <laughs> it's hard to scratch. Very hard to scratch here. Get those balls open. Slow, long, slow backstroke. Oh. Whoa, man, I got lucky there. The cue ball did not follow to the rail. I got more spin on it than I did follow. But I need five more balls. This combination is almost dead. It's not quite dead, but it's almost dead. So there's one, two, three, four, five. That's what I see. And I'm think at first I thought to myself, oh my God, I don't want to have to shoot a combination. Please no. <laughs> but this combination is easy enough. Now I take a look at it. I have to cut the four ball to my left. Eight ball. But that's perfect because then I'm gonna put some right spin. And the cue ball is going to go to the rail and come out here, and I've got two pigeons to set up for the one ball here for my 100th point in a row. And this is super easy. 15 ball slide over here, 13 straight in on the one, and that is that is going to be 100 points. 100 balls pocketed in a row. Some balls were made uh, on the opening break shot, and some balls were made... Bonus balls on the, the break shots when the, when I played position for a, a break shot, a straight pool style break shot. Um, but that's 100 points, 100 balls in a row, five racks in a row. Super straight pool practice. I hope you enjoyed that. Leave your comments and questions. I will try to answer them. And look how relieved I am. It took a week. I had to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> oh I was god. like, oh my god, I finally did it. I was oh. holding it together that last rack. I was trying so hard to simply execute my fund my shot routine as best I could on every shot. That's all I was doing, and I made it. <laughs> Woo! Now I'm ready for my uh road to 200 attempts Tuesday and Friday on a live stream. Tune into those and watch me suffer some more. <laughs> Hope you like that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, if you're going to play straight pool, play it straight. And see you next time on Short Stop on Pool. Bye.